Hi, guys! Today we're gonna make something really unusual! We'll make a copy of the most famous portrait in the world, the Mona Lisa! And I've already found a perfect reference! Thank you, Sammy! First of all, we need to sketch out the proportions for future drawings. Cause the Mona Lisa is a very proportional picture. Let's do it by hand. We'll start with the head and hair. So, do all people have the same face proportions? Um, not really, Sammy. All people have different features. I mean, the eyes, nose, and mouth. But there is no one as beautiful and perfect as me. <laughs> it's time to go in with the shadows and the highlights. Don't skip this part. Because it will help us to understand the proportions better. Correct proportions is like 90% of a perfect drawing. drawing? <laughs> Did you think this was ready? Of course it's not. We've just made the sketch so that the final result will be nice and clean. Now we're gonna transfer the main lines onto a new paper sheet. For this, we'll need a piece of sepia chalk stick. Where is it? Is this the brown one you're searching for? I owe you one, Sammy. It's all very simple. We just need to rub it all over the back of our drawing. What are we gonna use to draw our Mona Lisa picture? The oil paints like Da Vinci did? Or acrylic paints, which are much easier? <gasps> or maybe watercolor? Oh, did I forget to tell you? We need crayons. That'll be something new. Then I'd better go get a new pack for such a special occasion. I didn't know we had one. This slime has so many secrets. <laughs> In the meantime, let's place the drawing on top of the clean sheet and go over the outline. Try to do it very precisely and tightly so that the imprint becomes clearly visible on the paper. Like this. Okay, this is the moment, guys. Fingers crossed. I hope it worked. Ta-da! That's great! Give us a thumbs up, guys, if you like that simple and effective technique. Ba -da -da -da. Let's see if I'm still able to do magic tricks. <gasps> Sammy! You need to be careful with crayons. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. That's better. Absolutely. Okay, let's go. We'll start with the easiest part and the biggest spot on Mona Lisa's figure. Her hair! At first, we'll use the lighter colors, cause that way we won't make any serious mistakes. And then… we'll add the darker colors. And all the colors will start to blend. Oh, it's gonna be so great! Hi! I heard people calling the painting Jokanda. I wonder why you tricked me, Susan. <laughs> I didn't, Sammy. The thing is, the title of this painting comes from Giorgio Vasari's biography of Leonardo da Vinci, in which he calls this lady Lisa Gherardini, the wife of a wealthy Florentine businessman, Francesco del Giocondo. Ah, uh, okay, I get it, but uh, what does Mona mean? Mona was a common Italian contraction of Madonna, meaning my lady or madame. Interesting. I see the hair is done and you need this for the face. You're absolutely right, Sammy. We get to the main and hardest part of our drawing. The technique is the same. We'll start with lighter colors. Try to work with the whole piece, guys. Not with the spots and then add darker shadows. Is it just me or does she not really have eyebrows? <laughs> you have a sharp eye, Sammy! Yes! 
She had her eyebrows shaved for real. Some people say that's because she followed the high fashion of the time, while others insist that the drawing is unfinished. <laughs> Anyway, in 2007, the ultra-detailed digital scan revealed that her eyebrows had simply faded over time and years of restoration works. So many secrets. Such a mysterious work. Yes, Sammy, exactly. Still, nobody is sure who this lady was. There's a theory that it's a female representation of Leonardo da Vinci himself. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Oh, this is so interesting! All done, Sammy! Check it out! So it's really great, but uh, maybe we should paint her dress in the background? Of course! That'll be our next step! Okay, guys, let's work on her dress! Sammy, bring me the green crayon, please! Here you are! I know, lighter colors first! Thank you, Sammy, you're a great helper! I'm lucky to have you, who can draw so well. And you can make a copy of this great masterpiece. I'll hang it in our dining room with great pleasure. <laughs> You're not the only one who wants to have this drawing, Sammy. In 1911, the Mona Lisa was stolen from Paris's Louvre Museum. And you know who was under suspicion? Ha! Huh, uh, maybe the head of the Louvre? You've got the potential of a crime fiction author, but no. You guessed wrong. Well, don't keep us all waiting. Tell us the correct answer. It was Pablo Picasso. But everything was fine to him. After two years, they busted Vincenzo Perugia, trying to sell the Mona Lisa to a Florence art dealer. How do you like it, guys? <laughs> then give us a thumbs up. <laughs> now we can finally get to the background. We'll start with the sketch. But guys, don't work on it too much or it will steal the whole attention from the foreground. And it's time to color it up. We'll make the sky using a moss green crayon. Yes, Sammy, just a little bit left. Hey, Mr. Sharp Eye, have you ever noticed something over Mona Lisa's left shoulder? Well, I don't know. Usually my eyes are on Mona Lisa, not on the background. And that's the reason not many people notice this little bridge. It's called the Ponte Vecchio, and it used to be situated in the center of Bobbio, a little village in northern Italy. Unfortunately, in 1472, it was ruined by the Great Flood. Oh, I really like how it turned out. All we've got left to do is one tiny final thing with the face. That's why you asked to sharpen all the crayons? Yes, we need to be very precise at this point. We're gonna add more shadows, more highlights here and there, so that it becomes more like a Renaissance painting. We'll also go over this part again in order to blend all the colors more softly. All done! Perler beads? You surprised me for real! And I've been wondering where it disappeared after our last craft. Guys! Hello, everyone! Remember when we participated in a 100,000 beads challenge with Sammy? I remember my idea impressed you a lot that time. I hope for the same effect today. What? What are you talking about, Sammy? Well, you are talking about the Starry Night and stuff. Let's create our Starry Night with Perler Beads. Oh, 
silly, that's genius! I'm no Van Gogh, but it's worth trying. What if instead of a starry night, we make a whole starry world or a galaxy? A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Since we're creating the night, we started with the darkest color beads. Interesting. Yeah, I see. Well, black is good. It seems to me there is no but. We won't make the whole picture black, will we? No, we won't. Have you ever seen Bingo's painting? Uh, yeah. Tammy, go see it and I'll continue here. I'll just, uh, take a look to brush up on the painting. Be right back. All right. Sammy, sorry, that's my cell phone. Just a moment. Uh, she didn't even let me finish. Van Gogh had additional colors in his painting. Oh, I think I'll add them. That's better. Guys, give a thumbs up if you like my greatest creation. Oh, she's coming back! So, what did I miss? <gasps> what? <laughs> Sammy, what did you do, you naughty slime? Why naughty? I'm creative! should be the starry night and you only had the night. Don't worry, we'll get to the starry part soon. There we go. This way. Look, something shaping up little by little. By the way, uh, what exactly is that? Oh, that's a cypress. It was growing right in front of Van Gogh's window. The great artist created several similar paintings. Actually, The Starry Night is a part of two series of his paintings. One series was about the view from his window in different times of day. The other series included his night landscapes. Oh, yeah. Sammy! <laughs> Soon you watch Fang Sai ghost off. You were telling very interesting facts. Go on. None taken, Sammy. I totally understand. Not everybody has an exquisite taste for the arts. <laughs> Are you saying that I don't have taste? Do you even know how many things I've tasted in my life? Oh, I guess I'm hungry. I'm gonna go find something really tasty. As you wish, Sammy. As you wish. Even if right now we're going to work on stars. Huh. I said I'm starting to work on stars, Sammy. No? Guess Sammy loves food more than art. Carefully. What happened? I'm gonna go check on Sammy. Sam, you all right? Sorry I frightened you, Susie. That pan fell by itself, I swear. That's okay, Sammy. The main thing is that you're safe. Whoa, what happened here? We were gone for just a few minutes. Oh, what a mess. Who did this? It wasn't me, that's for sure. This is the case for... Detective Sam. I'm sure the intruder left a trail. I'm gonna find him. I don't see the tweezers. Where could they disappear to? I guess I got it. I'm gonna bring your tweezers back. Well, well, that won't do. We should quickly clean up this mess. Voila! <laughs> Great, that's better. Uh, here are your tweezers, Susie! Thanks, detective. I can't believe it was Fluffy's work. Well, whatever. You're no slouch, too, as I can see, Sue. Now you are officially a junior assistant detective. I subscribe. Oh, I mean approve. Oh, what an honor. Thank you, Sammy. There we go. 
Guys, this work requires patience and accuracy. This process is actually quite meditative, I should say. There. Wow, so beautiful! Sue, what kind of painters are there? I mean, according to their style of painting. There are portraitists, those who paint portraits of people, and also animal painters. They paint animals. Aha! Uh -huh. And uh, what kind of painter was Van Gogh? Um, he was a post-impressionist, Sammy. Why? I drew something while you were busy with the puzzle. Wanna see? Oh, sure, let's see. Well, what do you say? Does it look like the post-impressionist painting? Oh, well, it definitely makes an impression. I'm watching you looking at my painting and I'm thinking, will I and my paintings be remembered and loved as long as Van goes? Sure, Sammy, you're one of a kind. Well, there are so many painters. Am I right, guys? Sammy's exceptional. Give him a thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you, Susie. You're making me blush. And when I feel this way, I want to eat. Where are my jellies? <laughs> oh, Sammy. the biggest star in the painting? You know, Sammy, there's a chance that's not even a star. What is it then? Kinda looks like other stars. Maybe it's Venus. Whoa, a planet! Yes, the scientists found out that Venus was very close to the Earth when Van Gogh was painting his picture. It was very bright. Wow, cool. So that's the starry planetary night. Uh, kinda. So let's finally get this finished. Sure, Sammy. And done. It took us a while, but it was very entertaining. <laughs> awesome. Oh, Sue, how long was I gone? Long enough for me to finish the picture. I've got a more important question. How many jellies did you eat in this time? I don't count my sweet shoe. You'd better iron the puzzle. As you wish, Sammy. Anything to make you calm. I'm just a bit worried that this beauty can simply get ruined. You shouldn't worry at this stage. While the picture's on a base layer, it won't get ruined. But there's one thing. Yeah? That's a mirror reflection of our picture. We need to turn it upside down. We can do that only after fixing the beads with an iron. Be very careful with the iron, guys. It's very hot and rather heavy. Sammy's right, guys. You better ask an adult to help you at this stage of the craft. Mm. This way. Be very careful. Well, are you ready? Whoosh! It came out so awesome! The picture is so flexible. Check it out. I love it. Well, what can I say? Yeah, it's not identical, but very close to the original painting. A craft like this can be a great gift. It's always a pleasure to make something incredible with your own hands. Tell your friends about perler beads and make your favorite painting at home.